Hello to everyone. My name is Yulia. I'm an iOS developer of mobile apps in Protocols IO. And today we talk about running protocols on mobile devices, how to do that, how to save them. And uh, we will have a section for questions. That's our agenda for today. First, we start from uh, describing authorization, what we allow to guest users, what we allow to authorized users, and uh, details about this process. After that, we will talk about main screen, its structure, and after that, we will go to feed and my library. We discuss how we show protocol details and step details, and our main question for today, how to run and save experiments. When you just install the app, on the first screen, you see this like in form. For not plugin users, we allow to search data and view it, uh, view user profiles and public groups. But if you want to run experiment or comment any protocol, you should create an account. It's for free. When you create an account, you have to verify it via a received email before using it just to sign in. Also, you can sign in via social networks or you can use already created account. After login, you will be taken to main screen at the top left corner, you see a button which opens side menu. Also side menu can be opened by swiping from the left side to the right edge of the screen. Side menu allows to navigate through different modules of the app. You can leave us feedback, use timers tool. You can check your profile or, or just change your personal file. A few words about structure of main screen. As you can see, it includes three tabs, running, which includes all your experiments and my library, also called File Manager. Let's start from the simplest one. Uh, the tab in middle called Feed opens a list of your notifications. You can track them, view list of shared items, accept the decline group invitations, navigate through links by typing highlighted words. You can view protocols, groups, and user profiles just through the app. For all other components, uh, you will be redirected to our website. Next, my library tab, also called File Manager. It consists of all user subfolders and its files. On top of the list of items, you see current selected folder. Right area with doubled folder icon open list of subfolders. Tap any subfolder here to view content. Small arrow means folder nested level. For top level folders, it's one arrow. For subfolders, it's two or more. When you tap this small arrow, it works like back button. If you want to view top level folders, just select my library tab. So it doesn't matter which folder you are viewing right now. On my library all this open top level folder side menu. Okay, our main question for today, how to run and save experiments. Let's imagine you are a new user and you don't have any bookmark protocols. You can search what you're interested in by tapping magnify icon on the right top page. Then just tap what you want to view exactly and you will be right to protocol detail screen. Show summary information, number of steps, contact information. Also, you can view protocol level comments here. View steps button opens a whole list of steps with brief description. It contains protocol title, number of steps, short description of each step, and component thumbnails. If you want to read full step information, just select the exact step. Structure of step or detail screen is similar to our website. It contains ordered components. Also, step detail screen contains a dictation mode. You can easily run it by tapping this small button on top of the screen. If you want to, you can add a step level comment here by tapping plus button. In comment screen, you can set up privacy. Private comments are visible for protocol owner and for you and public are visible for all users. Okay, let's imagine you found the right protocol. What next? You have two options to run it from protocol detail screen or via step detail screen. As you see, run button was changed to save button and progress bar appears on top of the screen. That small square checkbox allows you to complete the step. If you want to complete the step, just tap it. If you want to skip the step, just swipe it from the right edge to the left edge. When you are trying to complete step in your own order, you will be aware because it's impossible. You can make notes to each step. They look similar to comments. A note it's just text and image, but uh, they're belonging only to you. That's the important difference between notes and comments. When you decided to save your progress, you should tap 
that small save button and you will see a folder selector which shows you all folders for saving or you can create a new folder here. After saving, your experiment will be synchronized with all devices and also it will appear in, in running tab and of course in corresponding folder. A few words about running tab. It contains all experiments ordered by defecation date. They are not separated by folders here, so you can see all your experiments in one place. If you need to delete already saved ex experiment, just swipe it. I think that's all about running process. This is how it works and how apps do it. Also, we have an Android application, so feel free to download it via Google Play or if you use iOS, find us in App Store. That's all from me. Thank you. If you have any questions, please contact us via emails. Thank you, Yulia. If anybody has any questions now, you can also either unmute yourself and ask a question or we have a chat window that should be on the bottom of your Zoom interface where you can type questions as well and we'll have time to answer that. Okay, so there's one question. Erica asks, what kind of log is created when you run a protocol? When you run your protocol, we create a complete copy of this protocol, but you will be able just to check your steps and run timers if they exist in any steps, for instance. And she asks, can that be exported? So yes, it can be exported as a PDF and you can also directly save it to uh, Dropbox or Google Drive, for example, or you can store it locally in your computer. And then we have another question. Can the app also be used as a daily lab journal? And the answer to that is yes, because you can run your protocols and you can get a record of every single run you do and you can make notes as you run the protocol and you will have a kind of like a lab notebook record of every experiment that you run. This is Lenny, one of the co-founders of Protocols IO. I just wanted to follow up on the two questions that we got, which are related the lab notebook-like functionality. And first of all, thank you, Yulia, so much for doing the webinar and for working on developing the app since day one, being the lead iOS engineer. And what I wanted to say is that the inspiration, the reason we created the mobile apps is precisely because we wanted the lab notebook functionality embedded into this. And I, I was a graduate student in Berkeley, then I did postdoc at MIT, and I realized that when I was doing experiments at the bench, my lab notebook was essentially the same protocol when I was doing method development or troubleshooting. It was the same protocol written over and over again with just slight modifications. So our idea why we invested into the running functionality on iOS, Android, on the web is to save you time, to save the scientists time so that you don't have to rewrite the protocol over and over. You've already written it. It's in protocols I own. Then you click run. And if you change step seven, you just edit that. And there is a record of what you've done. And then you can add results, images to it, annotations. But the idea is for it to be exactly like a lab notebook. It doesn't mean that we want you to use us as a lab notebook and us only. We do allow export of everything. You can export all of your protocols. You can export all of your records as a PDF. You can print it out. There are actually electronic lab notebooks like Synode and RSpace, which actually connect to protocols I also. If you use those, uh, there is an integration that makes it easier. But you can also print it out. You can put your records into your binder, physical binder. You put, can put into Google Docs, Evernote, Benchling, whatever you use. So we do have that functionality. But if you are already using a different electronic lab notebook, you can do that as well. OK, and Erica um, also asks, would it be possible to have an editable version of the export? say a text file. So you can, when you export it, it will be a PDF, but you can make changes to the experiment run on protocols IO directly if you need to. And everything again will get a timestamp and then you can export again, but you cannot export an editable text file. And just to add to what Anita said, you, you can't, it, it is like a lab notebook. We fix the record. Um, so you, you can sort of write on the margins, you can add notes, but you can't, change something that you did six months ago. You can't go back to a record and edit it. So for that reason, we fix it. 
you can, we do have APIs. You can get the JSON, which is more of the text file rather than the PDF, but that's through API access. It's very difficult when you have images, videos, tables, it's very difficult to have a coherent, reasonable text-only export that's not PDF. Okay, if there's no further questions, as Julia mentioned already, you can always reach us at info at protocols.io and send us any follow-up questions you might have to that. And then we'll stick around for a couple more minutes in case there are any other questions, but if you have to run, you can run. And thank you everybody for joining us today. And thank you so much, Julia, for hosting. Thank you.